Welcome to this tutorial on Amazon EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. Amazon EKS is a fully managed Kubernetes service from AWS. It helps you run Kubernetes clusters without needing to install or operate your own control plane or nodes manually. Here's how it works. AWS handles the Kubernetes control plane, including the API server, ECT database, and control loop, across multiple availability zones for high availability. You manage and deploy your containers on worker nodes, which can be either EC2 instances or AWS Fargate, a serverless option. Now, about pricing. Amazon EKS is not included in the free tier. You pay 10 cents per hour for each EKS cluster you run, plus the cost of compute resources like EC2 or Fargate. That's about $72 per month per cluster just for control plane management, so use it wisely for hands-on practice. As for use cases. EKS is great for running containerized applications at scale, microservices, CI-CD pipelines, machine learning workflows, and hybrid cloud workloads. It's ideal when you want the power of Kubernetes with the reliability and scalability of AWS. With this brief introduction, let's dive into the hands-on section. In this session, we'll walk through a quick hands-on with Amazon EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. Please note, EKS is a premium service. Even a short demo may incur AWS charges. So if you're just learning, feel free to follow along without deploying. Let's begin by creating a new EKS cluster. Open the EKS console and click Create Cluster. You'll see two options. Quick Configuration, EKS Auto Mode, the fastest way to launch a production-ready cluster with default settings. It automatically handles node creation and storage setup. Custom Configuration, lets you tweak settings before the cluster is created. You can still use auto mode here, but with more control. For this demo, we'll select quick configuration. Give your cluster a name. Keep the default Kubernetes version. IAM roles for the cluster. EKS needs an IAM role for the Kubernetes control plane. Click create recommended role. Choose the default AWS service role. Click next, then next again. Review and create the role. Return to the EKS console and refresh. You'll see the IAM role is now selected. Node IAM role. EKS also needs an EC2 instance IAM role to manage worker nodes. Click Create Recommended Role. Select EKS. Click Next. Then Next. And create the role. Return to the console and refresh. You'll now see the node IAM role selected as well. Networking settings. Keep the default VPC. Select at least two subnets where the control plane can place network interfaces. For this demo, we'll pick two public subnets. Note, you can create a private EKS cluster if needed. But if your workloads need internet access, you'll need at least one public subnet. Click on View Quick Configuration Defaults to view cluster configuration details. Click Create. The cluster creation request is now submitted. Cluster status. On the cluster info panel, status shows creating. It'll take a few minutes. Kubernetes version is 1.32. Provider is EKS. There are no health issues for the cluster and nodes. Let's briefly explore the tabs. Overview displays cluster health, version, and support info. Resources lets you manage namespaces, workloads, and services. Compute shows node groups and Fargate profiles. Networking covers VPC, subnets, security groups, and access settings. Add-ons, install or upgrade software. Access, manage IAM roles and map them to Kubernetes RBAC. Observability, integrate CloudWatch, Prometheus, or OpenTelemetry. Update history, tracks any changes to the cluster. Tags, assign metadata for billing or organization. Now the cluster is active. It displays OpenID Connect Provider URL to connect to this Kubernetes cluster. Under the Nodes section, we can see the active worker nodes that are part of this cluster, is running in auto mode, and is managed by the system. The node is currently in a ready state, meaning it's healthy and available for scheduling pods. Below that, we have Node Configuration, which displays built-in node pools. Since this EKS cluster is running in auto mode, AWS automatically manages node pools for us. We have two node pools here, general purpose and system. Both use the default node class and are associated with the Amazon EKS node role IAM role. As shown, their statuses are both ready, indicating they're healthy and operational. You can click manage on the right to adjust configurations for these built-in node pools. 
In EKS, the control plane is fully managed by AWS. You cannot access or see the control plane nodes like you do with worker nodes. The components like the API server, scheduler, and controller manager all run on AWS managed infrastructure. This infrastructure lives inside your VPC, but it's not directly visible to you. Now, let's talk about compute resources in EKS. These are managed through node groups and built-in node pools. Both serve to run your Kubernetes workloads, but they work differently. Built-in node pools are default groups in your EKS cluster. They are simple and suitable for general-purpose workloads. You cannot customize or modify these built-in pools. On the other hand, node groups, especially EKS-managed node groups, are much more flexible. They allow automated lifecycle management of EC2 instances. That includes provisioning, updating, and terminating nodes as needed. In summary, use built-in node pools for straightforward use cases with minimal setup. Choose node groups if you want automation, scalability, and control over your compute layer. Create a managed node group. To add worker nodes, go to Compute then Node Groups, then click Add Node Group. Give it a name, for example, Demo Node Group. Next, create an IAM role for this group. Click Create Recommended Role. Leave the default settings. Click Create Role. Provide a name like EKS Node Role and finish. Back in the EKS console, refresh to select the new role. Click Next. Configure Node Group. Use the default AMI type and on-demand instance type. For this demo, select T3 Micro. Set scaling options. Leave the desired size, minimum and maximum as defaults. Leave update configuration as default. Optionally, enable node auto repair. This feature automatically replaces unhealthy nodes. Click Next. Network settings for nodes. Leave remote access settings as default. Click Create to provision the node group. These EC2 instances are now part of your EKS cluster, fully managed by AWS. You can also use AWS Fargate to run containers without EC2 instances. To try it, go to Compute then Fargate Profiles and click Add Profile. For this tutorial, we'll skip it, but it's a great option for serverless Kubernetes. Add-ons EKS supports Kubernetes add-ons. For example, you can install Metric Server for auto-scaling and monitoring. Enable drivers for EFS, Core DNS, and Cube Proxy. Important. When you're done, delete resources to avoid charges. First, delete the managed node group. Delete the EKS cluster. You'll be asked to confirm by typing the cluster name. Cluster deletion takes a few minutes. Let's wrap up the tutorial. To summarize, in this session we set up an Amazon EKS cluster, created IAM roles for the control plane and worker nodes, and provisioned compute resources using a managed node group. We also explored key tabs and configuration options, and reviewed optional features like AWS Fargate and add-ons. While EKS simplifies Kubernetes infrastructure management, Kubernetes itself comes with a learning curve, so keep exploring, and consider diving deeper through additional courses and learning resources.